Sebastian and I have been having the odd chat about um, the placement and um, templates and shapes and how hard they can be. Um, and um, I spent a little bit of time recently um, just looking at ways that other um, languages, um, languages like Angular, or you know, uh, frameworks like Angular and Vue work in terms of a component model. Um, and then I kind of came back to Orchard, and I, so I, I took the blog recipe and I said, what would this look like if I built it in Angular? Um, which bits would be reusable components? Um, I want to interrupt you. I want, yes. I want to talk about why we had this discussion and not just right to where you get to. So I, I've been I've been complaining a few times the past weeks about the complexity of um, building a site in Orchard. Okay, and what is what makes what makes it hard? Hard. Okay, and and I said the the ultimate solution would be to just remove the templating in Orchard and just use decoupled. So you don't have to, to know about shapes at all. No more shapes. And then you just write your pages, your controllers. You have lots of APIs to get your content and to, you can reuse ASP.NET caching, you can reuse ASP.NET partials, you can reuse just ASP.NET and do your site like this. Okay, it's a decoupled site. Let's just forget about shapes and rendering everything from module. Just let people render their own things and provide tools to, to render the site. And it might be slower at first to build a site, but they will never be blocked by, I don't know what the shape is. I don't understand how shapes work. What is placement? What is placement info? What is the list of alternates I can use to change that and that and so on? And so that's the first point. And the second point that I, I wanted to make was to say that we have themes today and recipes that build some predefined solutions like a blog, like an agency a site and it can be extended to anything well you still had have to understand all the shape and display mechanism to build these elements but at least someone using that will not have to okay it's already usable so my solution to that will be to still create recipes but recipes that will contain razor pages and controllers and anything that will build the blog even if we didn't have shapes and placement and everything like build a decoupled site that is a blog and this is a recipe so when you install it you have the same blog the same thing working and if you want to change it you don't have to learn shapes you just look at the page that renders the blog the partial that renders the blog post and you just change it or you create a new one and you change the code directly it's just ASP.NET there is nothing new to learn out of ASP.NET that was my my target that I think that was a solution to have and then I took we talked with Dean and Dean tried to convince me, I think he managed to convince me to say the issue is not shapes because shapes are great and the issues are, and that's why I wrote in the OneNote, what he, he, he suggested was the issue is zones and placement. Okay, this is what is hard because shapes in the end, if you just take shapes by themselves, they are just a dynamic view model that can, that has alternates and that can be rendered using templates. It's like a partial. It's like a view component in ASP.NET, but it's like a view component with more features. Like it can have an ID, CSS class, attributes. It can have dynamic behavior. It can have cache. Um, it has alternates. So it, it has dynamic resolution of templates, which a view component doesn't have. So this is where we stopped, and now I will let Dean continue discussion and to to make the bridge between what I just said and what Dean just said about Angular and React components. Let's think about a shape as a reusable component, like a view component in SP.NET, but like an orchard shape component that can be reused. Thanks, Sebastian. That's probably a better summary than I even than I started with. Um, so. What I did was I, I went into Angular, um, which I'm quite familiar with, and I said, what would a blog site look like if I built it um, in Angular with components? Um, and uh, this just so just to, to kind of refresh on everybody, this is what a what the blog 
looks like in um, our standard kind of template. So we have um, quite a big zone here, area where we build a header component, um, and then we render a bit of um, the shapes that have been produced by the drivers. Um, and when you look at this, when I first looked at this header, I was like, right, okay, so why isn't this a shape? This is all very similar code. We've got it here. We've got it on the blog post as well. Um, you know, it's exactly the same code. Why am I? So I looked at that and I was like, that does just doesn't add up to me. Um, and we've got it here on the article as well. Um, and then I looked at it a little bit closer and I was like, right, so this one is basically identical. It's got a different image for it. Um, and this bit here is different. Um, and then if we go to the blog po the blog itself, or the post probably, we'll find that the subheading is, is different. It's an H2 instead of a span, um, and it has a meta class. Um, and I thought, right, okay, so that doesn't kind of, that, that's comp it's complicated to turn this into a shape. Um, that's actually a little bit reusable um, and make this template make sense. And uh, a little bit of background on this at the moment as well. At the moment, I'm doing a similar kind of a zone, um, a header zone, um, and I've got 20 content types. So I've got 20 templates that I need to build that all have some very, very common functionality. Um, so I looked at what that would look like in Angular. Uh, for example, and it would for me it would be quite simple. I would have in my kind of base component a header component. I'd have a title. I'd have a, a text field component, and I'd put these things into what are known as slots. Um, and then when we went into the actual header itself, you'd have all that kind of standard governs. And then you just say, this is where I want my title slot to turn up. Um, and then when I built the the blog post page, which had a different subheading, um, the page itself would just look like HTML subheading. Kind of thing. Um, so to come back to Orchard and code, wherever it is. Um, so I said to myself, what would that look like in Orchard? And um, I've done it in Razor for the moment, but I've done it in such a way that you could do it. We can probably do it for Liquid. Um, so I've taken the old blog template, which is this, which is quite large um, and kind of is used in like three places. Um, and I've introduced the idea of some slight alterations to some of our shape tag helpers where we can actually, in kind of an ordinary template, um, nest different bits of content, different slots, different HTML, other shapes, um, in a way that they look readable, they look like HTML, um, they're uh, they're understandable. Like I think they are anyway. I, I look at this and I'm like, well, this kind of makes sense. It's a shape. It's a it's the header shape. It's got some properties on it. Oh, then it's going to do a title thing. Then it's going to do the subheading, and it all kind of adds up. Um, and then when you get down to the actual reusable shape. Again, it kind of adds up. It's it goes into the zone, the header zone. Um, it's got the media path. It renders the slots. Um, and I've got an option there for required false, which I haven't actually implemented yet. But um, that was kind of actually where I ended up when I started looking at um, kind of how hard shapes work for people. 
Um, and if we go back to the blog template, um, I kind of did an example here of what this might look like if you had to actually make a shape um, to do it, just in, in, in Razor. Um, so you have to make a new shape. Um, you have to assign some properties to it. Um, you have to give it the title property. You have to make an, another shape and another template, especially for the subheading. Um, then you can give it the the shape that has the value for the subheading. Um, and you end up with a template that looks like this, which is, is quite, that, that makes quite good sense. But you also have to end up with another template here, and another template here, and another template here, just to handle all these slight alterations that are happening to the content because of because they want a different, um, one wants a span, one wants an H2. Um, so it's more than just kind of classes, it's actual content itself. Um, so another example here. Um, so the example here in this one is that, is that this gets to turn into a, an H2 and that's it's just an inline template. Um, this is actually, uh, I've got a link there somewhere. Um, After looking at Angular, I started looking at web components and reminded myself how they worked. Um, and the template slot concept is actually there in web components, which is why I've named it as I have. Um, um, where's the example that they show? Something very similar. Um, so, yeah, they, just, they define a slot like this. Um, and you know their example is they change from a span. Here it changes to a um, a URL and a list. Um, so the content can change qu quite dramatically, um, while still being reasonably clear about um, how the template is defined. So it's very easy to kind of come in here and look and say, oh, there it is. It does some things. Um, so that's kind of where I got to. Um, I've, I've got another branch as well, uh, Seb, which has um, a kind of component model where, which actually builds these at the time you call them rather than from a driver. Um, so you just get to say, um, just send the JSON of, of what the, um, the thing is. but. That is that one loses some um, some of the nice things that that zones and placements do that do for us. Um, nice the and kind of sorry, nice and complex things that it provides. The nice and complex things. Um, the biggest thing that it loses if you if you if you don't have the drivers happening um, is. If we looked at, I think we'll probably see it on, on this. Um, you lose things like the title um, but, and you lose things like RSS feeds that that are all, all coming automatically and are all the, the kind of advantages that we get from um, a system. They are pushed by the system into, into, into predefined zones and in the new model it will it, you have to explicitly pull them from some API to say, now I want to inject some RSS feed, provide me the RSS feed. So it's not automated this way anymore. That, there might be solutions yeah. to still do that. I think there are solutions. Um, one example in, in the template here is we're actually already doing that. Um, in, in this particular one, we're saying render mm -hmm. the title because we know that that's, that's there. Um, one of the other things I've been doing is um, in placement um, automatically because I don't want to call this every time because I'll forget because um, I'm forgetful um, is I, I automatically move that to a, a header zone in the layout um, for everything because I always want a title um, you know I always want a page title um, and that could be that could be one kind of thing is for that that common stuff um, 
not to render it as part of the content zone, but to, to move it more to a layout um, zone as such, um, potentially. Okay. Thank you. I will have to wrap up the meeting um, because it's almost time. But that looks promising. It even so, I like the, the, the custom zones well, the custom tags for templates. And I will definitely look into the Mozilla um, MDN page for the web components to see if there's something we can get from that. Um, I'm also wondering if it should not be something directly in MVC. So today they have view components, which I think very few use. Maybe they should go further and have something more like a web component, but on the server side, um, with also dynamic template resolution like shapes do. So maybe something between shapes and view component that might be interesting in, in MVC directly. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, sorry, I know you've got to wrap, wrap up. A lot of what I'm doing here is, is less about shapes and more about um, tag alphas, to be honest. Um, but yeah, let's talk more about that. Cool. Thanks a lot for your um, uh, effort.